Hey guys, Miss Denny here with another YouTube lecture, this time mini lecture, just to give you some background info, some context to better understand the Zoot Suit Riots. A lot of this will be review, but there will be some new information. So I hope you enjoy. Here we go. As many of you already know, the southwestern part of the United States was Mexico before America acquired that, those territories in the Mexican-American War. So there's already a population of Mexican people living in the United States. Then with the Mexican Revolution and uh, more immigration in the 1920s, about 3 million Mexican and Mexican-Americans lived in the U.S. Los Angeles had the largest Mexican-American population of any U.S. city. So the next two things you already know from yesterday's video, but here is a little bit of review. By the 1940s, Mexican-American youth had adopted the Zoot Suits. They adopted it from the Harlem Renaissance. And they were seen as unpatriotic during World War II since Americans were trying to conserve supplies and the zoot suits used excessive fabric. And so people wearing zoot suits were seen as somewhat unpatriotic. Here we see some youth wearing zoot suits. And as you know, the Latino youth who wore zoot suits uh, named themselves the Pachucos at this time. And here we see the disappointed servicemen looking at, oh, all this excessive material used during wartime. That doesn't seem very patriotic. One thing to note quickly is the Bracero program, which was a program implemented by the government to import Mexican farmers to when there was a large farming shortage in the United States. This is something to note because when the Zoot Suit riots got out of control, the U.S. government did not intervene until they thought it was a threat to their Mexican workers. In other words, they didn't really care about the Mexican-American youth that were being attacked rather than the workers that would be feeding the United States. This is an image of Mexican farmers registering for the Bracero program. And this is a picture of the lunch line during the program. Take a look at the youth here. They look super young. These are some of the kids that were arrested for this one murder that was unsolved. Thinking of that word scapegoat, 600 Mexican-American youth were blamed for the murder of one Mexican-American youth. And the media used this opportunity to show kids wearing zoot suits as gangsters. So then there was more public feeling towards the zoot suit that was negative. In May and June of 1943, the Zoot Suit riots broke out in Los Angeles. These riots lasted several days, and thousands of servicemen participated going around in gangs pretty much attacking Mexican-American youth on the street wherever they saw them. They were extremely dehumanizing, beating them, calling them racial slurs, and stripping them of their Zoot Suits. Filipino and African-American youth were also attacked. Perhaps needless to say, the majority of servicemen and women in L.A. during this time period were white. And in the next slides, you're going to see how they went around in groups with their batons waiting to see a zoot suitor walking down the street just to attack them. As you already know from yesterday's video, police were complicit to the white servicemen's violence. In fact, hardly any servicemen were arrested and hundreds of Mexican-American youth were arrested during this horrific event. This is a pretty intense image from the Zoot Suit riots. You can see how this little boy 
is on the ground, clearly hurt, and the other boy has been stripped of his zoot suit. While well, there's just onlookers, bystanders, people don't know how to react or um, what to do, and the other boys are just humiliated while the police just kind of stand there. 